Hello, welcome to another Lemon Amiga Play Guys and Review. This time we'll be checking out Air 10 Tank Killer, developed by Dynamics and published in 1991. This is the 1.5 version that I'll be reviewing and in the 1.5 version it also gives us the credits of the 1.0 version and the 1.0 version was coded by Joseph Wingard who also created the 3D games Red Baron for Dynamics and also the 3D Stellar 7. Checking out the main menu, we can fly one mission, start the campaign, continue a campaign, check out our high scores, and also select a mission set of the missions available. And by checking out those preferences, we can also change the joystick calibration because we fly with the joystick, or I guess we can also use the mouse. And the graphics are interesting because we can have 32 colours on the screen at once, or 16 if we have a slow machine, but I'm actually using an Amiga 4000 or 60, so let's choose the 64 colour mode and all the dithering and all the light sourcing as well. Let's choose to start a campaign and before we can start the actual campaign we have to enter our name and then we have to go through a gruelling training mission which involves us blowing stuff up. We're then introduced to Colonel Cord, who is nothing like Robert Young, and he gives us our mission brief. In this training mission, we will have to get used to all of our weapons on an A-10 tank killer aircraft. And an A-10 is a pretty heavily laden aircraft, as you can see, there are lots of things on offer that we can swap around, but you can also select the default, and that just gives us a nice even spread. By clicking on the goal, that will thrust us into the game itself, and from there we'll have to learn to fly our aircraft. Now we must press the 9 key to speed up and having done so we'll have to wait until we get to flight speed which is over 200 and then we can take off from that runway. We are also given some instructions follow the destination which appears on the hood. In this case our first destination is a water tower and all we have to do is to circle around it and that will be checked off our requirements list and at this stage it's pretty easy. Now let's find out if we can handle live ammunition by using the Mavericks and I'm just slowing this down so that you can actually read it because on the old 60 these messages fly by pretty quickly. And so the first thing that we need to do is to press the map key, the M key, and that will bring up the map. From there we can lock on target. And as far as I know, that's one way to lock on target from any distance. Then we need to sweep down so that we increase our speed. And then we can fly over to the next target. As soon as the ground target is within range, it will be automatically locked upon. And as soon as that happens, we can then press the space bar to launch that missile at the target. You can see we have the arrow on the bottom of our heads up display that will lock on to our target. And by following the arrow, we can then follow it all the way there. In this case, it's a tank, it's a T-72. Target destroyed. The next exercise is to fly to the next location and drop a large guided bomb, and maybe that's a laser guided bomb, onto the target. And an A-10 isn't the fastest aircraft in the world, in fact it's quite slow. It's a bomber, not really a fighting aircraft, but it is a gesture because it's a master of quite a few areas. You can see I'm just changing to the large guided bomb and it's a guided bomb so yet again what we need to do is to wait for the target to appear 
visually and then the aircraft will lock onto that and then we can simply release that bomb onto the target. We're flying over a runway at the moment, an airfield, and that's something that we'll need to bomb a little bit later on. But for now, let's just speed up this footage and let's get to the buildings. Time to move on to our next mission. This time we need to use the rock eye cluster bombs. And rock eye cluster bombs are a bit like normal bombs, only they have three or four droplets and they will explode onto things nearby. The aim of this mission is to select a number of tanks which are on the far side of this hill. By using the cluster bomb in the center of those, hopefully we can take them all out in one go. And with the old 60, it's not a bad flying experience, and it's not too slow, but I can imagine with lesser CPUs, this game could crawl along. Maybe with the faster settings and the 16 color mode, we might get a few more frames per second from this game. Don't forget, this was created by Dynamics, an American company, and unfortunately, I forgot to record this in NTSC mode. So we get to see that full screen like the authors intended, but with the old 60, hopefully, it's a bit better. It looks like on that run, we missed the target entirely, and all we can do is speed off into the distance, and then slow down again, and hopefully perform a brake turn, and line back onto that target. The convoy destroyed, now it's time to use the Duran dolls on the runway. And apparently, Duran dolls were made in France, they are an anti runway weapon, and that's the only weapon that you can use in this entire game which destroys runways. You can see on my heads up display D U R, Dur, that's for Durandal, and that's what we need to select to blow up the runway. So it's on the other side of this hill, and on this training mission, all we need to do is to avoid crashing into that landscape. Let's speed up the footage again and get there, and we have it already selected, so when we have that lined up, we can hopefully blow up the runway. Next exercise is to kill a platoon of mock Soviet tanks, and that means flying over to a different location. And it's a pity that you can't see the parachute emerging from the bombs that we've just dropped. Maybe we'll see that a little bit later on. In the meantime, let's angle our aircraft in the right direction, and by locking on the map, we can then follow that arrow which is on the bottom of our heads up display. Any ground targets in the game can be destroyed by using Mavericks. And just like F-18 Interceptor, the Mavericks are a good general purpose weapon. But if we run out of Mavericks, the only thing that we can use is the Annihilator, otherwise known as the Chain Gun. And if we use the Annihilator too much or too often, that thing will overheat and jam. So we can't afford to do that as soon as we line up those targets. We're going to have to use that in short bursts, and then we can take down the enemy.
Our final mission in this training section is to take down a helicopter that is buried deep in a valley and so we'll have to fly out there and find the helicopter. And in this particular case, the helicopter can fly around and it can be underneath the radar. You can see we do have a radar but enemies don't seem to appear on it. And to the left of that we also have another radar, perhaps I haven't bothered to switch that on. But you can see and definitely hear me flying around the aircraft and not being able to see it on the radar at all. Finally, that thing crosses my path, so I waste no time in shooting that down with a Maverick. Congratulations, that's just completed these exercises. And so, when that happens, you can return to base and we'll get a debrief. Colonel Cord says, well done, this has been another completed mission. And so we have some breaking news. Da -da 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 -da. Central Europe is under attack again. And so it's our job to single-handedly fly out there and blow everybody up. In the meantime, we get a mission summary. Everything has been successful. And it also gives us a breakdown of the trucks and the installations as well. And our high score, which is 74,985 points. Those will be told up on the total amount of missions, of which I think there are eight available on every scenario. Let's check out the next mission, and then we'll get a debrief. And so, here we go again. This is Europe. This is the first mission of the game. It gives us some handy coordinates of a building that we're supposed to take down, but unfortunately all of the missions on the main discs of 18 Tank Killer 1.0 are pretty darn difficult, and in this mission you're going to see why. Yes, we have to target buildings in a city, and it's not obvious which of the buildings in the city is the one that we need to take down, and we could destroy any of the buildings in the city by mistake. You can see we have two Durandals, just in case we need to blow up a runway, but we aren't taking any rock eyes, we're taking a few extra Mavericks instead. Let's set off, and I don't tend to use chaffs and flares, although you're supposed to use those in the game. In our landing gear, we find we are in a safe zone, and those are our major targets. It is the Atrium building, and we have a few Goshkin rocket launches as well. So we have a friendly, and the friendly will communicate with us from time to time, especially if we follow that guy into the action. found a rocket launcher but it wasn't the right one and Blackjack's already bitten the dust so it's up to us yet again. You can see on the left of the small radar we now have red dots which shows our main priority which is great they weren't on the training mission and to the right we also get a visual representation of whatever it is in this case it's the Goshkin rocket launchers. We 
can also check our map just to make sure that our target is the right one and heaven selects the dart we can then blow it up. That's the city defences all laid out to waste so surely our next objective is the city. We have to destroy two buildings in the city. Those two buildings are highlighted on the map. One of them is the atrium building, and I think it's the green building in this case, and I think the black one is the other one that we need to knock out. Unfortunately, those buildings do not appear on the mini radar, and if you blow things up at random, sometimes you can blow up the wrong thing. In this case, you can see that all of the bombs that I dropped didn't hit those targets. And if it wasn't for that small detail of me not having a clue which ones I'm supposed to blow up, then it would have been a bit easier. This is a green building that maybe appears on the radar when you've hit the right one. Let's blow it up and see what happens. Nope, it appears that the building or target is still on the radar. You can see we can also target bridges as well, and bridges remind me of the Commodore 64 classic Mercenary, which is also converted to the Amiga. But this gives you an idea of some of the missions, and it's unfortunate that the missions start off difficult, and a lot of the magazines lowered the score because of the mission difficulty, and also the frame rates, of course, played on a triple O processor on a PAL machine. Looks like we've missed again, so what we can do in that particular case, or what I decided to do, was to crash into the ground. That will then quit the game and it will also decease our character. Unfortunately, it's better to press escape and return to base than crash, because it means that we need to enter a new character and begin the training mission all over again. And unfortunately, we cannot revive our deceased character, and we can check out all the stats that we managed to acquire while we were actually alive. So that is a good thing, but it's unfortunate that we died. So skipping on ahead, there are lots of different missions in this game, and this is A10 Tank Clue 1.5 that I'm actually reviewing, which came on three discs instead of two which means that we get a whole rake of extra missions. By selecting the mission set, we can select any one of those discs. The first one contains the first seven missions, and the second disc contains the extra seven missions, and so the final disc contains some more missions, Let's check out Deep Strike for this one, and hopefully we're still in Europe, and hopefully it's another chance to take out a base and some targets. This mission is a bit of a dilemma because all of the major targets are highlighted with a circle upon them and those are the targets that you're supposed to go for first. Unfortunately, because all the missions are pretty difficult, this one requires to use cluster bombs to take out a whole row of tanks. If we can't do that, we can always use the Annihilator, which will hopefully get rid of the whole row of tanks for us. Maybe we can also use a large guided bomb as well but using a Maverick will only destroy one tank at a time, and that means that we need to fly around the target multiple times in order to take it out. So let's just speed up that footage a little bit again and get there. And again, lovely bridges reminding me of mercenary, and you can blow those up.
In this particular case, I've managed to find the targets, but they are required in more than one of our Mavericks. And you can only carry a certain amount, and I don't think that you can return back to base and get a resupply. So what I'm actually doing at the moment is fruitlessly going around in a circle trying to knock out the first target. Just like all flight sims, if you bank too closely then you'll find yourself too close to the enemy that means you can't knock them out, and that means you're going to have to fly around again. You can see the blip on the left of our small map shows the radar blip, and that means that, well, somebody's just blown up our target for us. It's still there, but it disappeared off the radar. What can we knock out next? Well, I can see a runway, and that's certainly a lot easier than knocking out these mobile rocket launchers. Co-pilot says D4, and by looking at this, well, we're heading in that general direction. You can see on the minimap, it says H9, now G9, so it shows us whereabouts we are on the map. Unfortunately, this is not an ace combat game, and you can see I'm having to check out my loadout just to make sure that I have the Durandals, which destroy the airport. If not, then you can't destroy it no matter what you try to do. Yet again, we found another row of tanks and one rocket managed to knock one of them out. But the supply base is getting hit and in this mission you have to knock out those long-range rocket launchers before the air base gets blown up and that's very difficult and just like the previous mission we are on a time limit Let's now turn our attention again back to the airport, which is a secondary target, and secondary targets do not have a big red ring around them. That's great, Sierra Hotel, and this was made by Dynamics, which is linked with the Sierra software company, so maybe Sierra has its own title within this game. So you can see that's the airport scratched off and that's one of the targets that we needed. Sometimes some of these missions don't even require us to fly all the way through it. Apparently the base has been blown up so that's us kicked out of the area. And you can see, great, you've managed to destroy the airport but you managed to let the supply base get blown up and so we've just been told off. You can see the resupply base has been destroyed. Oh dear. So these missions are pretty darn difficult. But luckily in the 1.5 edition, we were given a few extra missions, which are certainly more fun and much easier. Checking out those missions, we get to see that they are based on Operation Desert Storm. And Operation Desert Storm has a number of missions associated with that. Let's check out the first one. It's called The Dilemma, and in this one, just like the previous one, it's a dilemma as to what to go for first, and if you go for the wrong target, perhaps you'll go for the wrong thing. So, the Green Berets have tagged a number of scuds, and it's our job to fly out there in Sector F3, and to blow them all up. So, let's take our cues from this, let's get on that runway, Let's get underway. We don't need any Durandals for this because no runways need to be blown up. 
And in this sortie, we don't have to take off from a runway, we're already in the air. So let's select our first target. It's something else, uh, maybe another rocket launcher. And hopefully I'm now gonna speed this footage up again so that we can get there pretty quickly. And also, we can also press escape at any point. And if we return to base, then we'll get a debrief, which is sometimes quite funny. And you can see James Mason is saying, why have you gone all the way out there and only to come back? This is not a sightseeing trip. But if we don't escape, we can be taken to that mission. And there are also friendly aircraft flying around, but also enemy aircraft as well. And because we only have two sidewinders to knock out aircraft, you really don't want to be flying in their direction. And you want to avoid aircraft at all costs. I'm not speeding this footage up, and you can see Mayday, Intruder, under attack. And usually friendly aircraft in this game get blown up pretty instantaneously, so you don't really get much chance of any wing combat. Let's select our major target, and the major targets in this game are only the ones that you need to blow up. If you don't, then you don't have to blow up all the minor targets, they're just collateral, and if you blow up all the major ones, that's mission over. The original 1.0 game was coded by Joseph Wingard, as we've mentioned already, stalwart of Dynamics, and the graphics for this game was coded by, well, created by Mark Brenneman, and he also created the graphics for, well, the adventures of Willie Beamish that we've seen already for Dynamics in 1992, a very cartoony kind of dynamic set for that game, and Mark Brenneman also created the very smart 256 colour graphics for Heart of China in 1992. So this guy really does have a massive range and a massive dynamic working for Dynamics, which was obviously an American company. So all these games were American games designed for NTSC. You can see we have four Mavericks left and only four Mavericks at this stage. So it means that we're going to have to conserve our firepower and use the Annihilator chain gun wherever we can and that will save our ammo. You can see some of the dials and some of the gauges work on our cockpit and we can use the F keys to navigate around our cockpit and look out of the window. But for the most part it's just the altimeter that you need to really look out for and that is listed on the heads up display. So let's select our next target and scoot around what looks like a city and let's knock out all these gainful good launchers and they should make an easy target because now all we need to do is to lock onto them and they should disappear. You can see we only have two major targets left. One of them is an Iraqi air defense patrol and air defense patrols probably mean it's a ground based target that shoots into the sky. A 10 tank killer is perhaps a difficult game to judge because the missions on the original discs are pretty difficult. But all of the missions on the expansion disc, the 1.5 edition, are really easy and really a joy and remind me of Ace Combat. down to two Mavericks and we've got some Rock Eyes so we can cluster bomb a few enemies and in this update the enemies are in fact clustered together which is brilliant and oh, the battle is over what do we want to do well if we continue flying we can gain some more score I think but if we return we'll get a debrief on what we've managed to do so far Unfortunately, the Scud launcher won't be a threat anymore. Well, fortunately, we've blown that up. But, unfortunately, the intruder 
well, walls blowing up, so destroying the Scud on our own was the right thing to do. So the Scud launcher was destroyed, and the A6 pilot was captured by the enemy forces. I'm not quite sure if you can do much about that, but these missions are significantly easier than the ones on the main disc, even though we only got 1500 points for doing it. You can see a chain of ammo leading into the ammunition box. Let's select another mission. This is the final mission that we're going to play in this playthrough. This is Sandstorm. And this again gives us a nice cluster of enemies to knock out. And all we need to do is to destroy the major ones to complete the mission. One last thing, Task Force 4 has a translator with them, and Task Force 4 is a platoon of tanks, as far as I know, so we're going to have to look out for them on the battlefield, and let's select the default loadout again, and set off. Some of these expansion disc missions also have us flying with a separate A-10 in a kind of a wing mission, but 9 times out of 10 those guys are blown up straight away, so I'm not quite sure the point of that. You can see a very nice spread of things to destroy, and only 4 major targets. We can head for the major one first of all, because that's the biggest target, and then sweep down the valley, hopefully with our chain gun blazing, take out the rest. The major target in this case is the major one tackling Task Force 4, so if we blow that up, hopefully Task Force 4 will be safe. So, yes again, let's just speed up that footage and get on through to the area. Stokes is down, so that's the other A-10 wiped out, so that means that we need to take them all on again. And in this case, I'm not quite sure which ones are the enemies. I think all of the enemies appear in grey, and there is a nice selection of them. A little bit like the Z-Wolf games, we see it already. Only it would be nice to have this area packed out with them, and to have refuel and rearm points so that we can go in and out of the mission. tanks were in colour and that perhaps meant that they were our friendly tanks and I blew them up with a chain gun anyway so that was a very nice takedown and when I played this game I weren't really interested in the radar so you can see we've lined up an M2 Bradley tank at the moment which is again another friendly adversary and that's Task Force 4 destroyed by our own missiles. Congratulations, well done. You've now defeated the enemy, which in this case was not the enemy, it was the Allied troops. So now we can move on down the valley and we can also move on to the scores. Amiga Power gave this game 68%. Amiga Mania gave this game the lowest score of 65%. Amiga Power gave it 65%, the current Lemon Amiga score is 65%, and the Amiga Computing score was 70%, Amiga Joker gave it 74, Amiga Action gave it 75, Amiga Format gave it 75%, uh, Data Magazine awarded this game 90%, and Zap also gave this 90%. And they said that this game is a great flight simulator on the Amiga, but those who rated it lowly complained about the frame speed. That means this game gets an average score of 7.5 out of 10, and as quite a fun game, I think it's not the hardest game to get into, it hasn't got the hardest controls, and with an 060, the frame rate 
floors at a nice leisurely pace. If you have an all 60 or if you have an NTSC machine with a decent CPU, check this out. It's not the hardest one in the bucket. And I really do think that this thing, once you get into it, really does have a great atmosphere all of its own. Thank you for viewing A Tank Tank Killer and another play guide and review. And I'll see you again, hopefully, in another one sometime soon. Thank you.